Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the Churchill card for both Friday and for Saturday. Uh, Saturday is Kentucky Derby Day, and Friday is Kentucky Oaks Day. And I'm going to be going over every single race with my analysis to see if there's any good values. Um, there are obviously a couple of disclaimers that go with doing a video of of horse racing uh, one day or two days ahead of time is that horse racing like anything else is is all about value and, and it, unless you know exactly what the odds are you're being you know pretty foolish to lock yourself into an opinion now, they do give you morning lines so i can have an idea of what's going to be overvalued or undervalued but um, you really should be wagering if at all as, as late as possible so that you know what your odds are. Now, there are some books now that can lock in certain odds and I haven't really spent a lot of time deal, doing that, if at all. I'm, I'm just more kind of like a pure horse racing gambler where you, you know, just can bet, <laughs> bet right up until post time and get whatever the odds are at the end. So when I go through this, I mean, I'm going to have to be very, um, I'm going to have to be very, you know, I don't want to say cautious, but I'm going to have to give you a, um, um, you know, kind of little guidelines for, for what you might, you know, what you might expect. The other thing is when it comes to where you should be wagering, I mean, you can really wager anywhere. If you, if you want to, if you want, I mean, I've been betting at XB select or, hundreds of years and, and you can sign up there and maybe get something like a, a bonus or something like that. Anyway, that's, pr that's pretty much it. I also don't know if this video is going to be for premium subscribers only to true DFS or whether I'm going to make it available to everybody. I'm just kind of not in the mood to make it free right now. Um, I've just done a little bit too much as far as free stuff for the horse racing, but I'll probably end up getting too lazy and not figure out how to, activate the premium only part of it. So we'll, we'll just see what happens. Okay, so we're gonna start with Friday. Listen, if you wanna fast forward through to Saturday Derby, you can do that. Uh, if I remember, I'll put timestamps on, but um, can't promise you I'll do that. Okay, so first race um, uh, on Friday, uh, I think destined to race the six at four to one is, is fair enough. I mean, I think it's the most likely winner. I can't promise you this is good value at four to one. Um, but listen, if you wanted to bet something, I think this is probably what you're supposed to do. Um, listen, it's like eight to five, nine to five, you know, don't bet it, but I think if it's around four to one. I think it's, I think it's pretty reasonable. Um, and the other thing is I'm not going to get into why I like the horses. I'm going to just say there's a lot that goes into it as far as my reading of the sheets. And one of these days I will, Maybe I'll do a seminar on how to bet horses and how to come up with this, but this is really just overall pick video. Like this is like who you should bet, no reasons or anything like that. That's for some other day. Okay, so race number two, unfortunately, is not that much value in this race either. I do like the two and the 11, two Padma and the 11 uh, Vava. They're both, you know, nine to two, four to one. So it's not nothing that great, but listen, Get yourself off to a start. I mean, you, you could do worse by betting, I guess, the every doubles in the first race with six, second race with two and eleven. I think it's I think it's fair enough. It's not gonna not gonna buy you a yacht or anything like that, but I think it's reasonable. Right now, number race three, we actually have quite a bit of value here. So I have three horses that I like, and they range from good middling prices to total bombs. So these are going to be the four, the nine, and the 11. The four bullseye run is 30 to one. Um, I feel as though he should be more like six or seven. Then you have the nine Cowboy Justice, 10 to one. I think he's extremely overvalued. I mean, undervalued. And then the 11 burning bright. So I like the four, the nine, and the 11. So again, if you want, um, you could bet early pick three, six with 211 with 4911, something like that. If you lost race two, race one, you could bet doubles 211 with 4911 and then 
you lose base race one and two, then you could start stuff off with race three. You could box these things. You know, there's all kinds of ways you could, you could, you could bet this, but those are the three I like, the four, the nine, and the 11. All right, race number four. Um, I think that the four and the 13, I think are the two main horses, not so close in Into Disco. I think they're pretty equal. So if I had to pick, I think that Into Disco would be the better value. Although, you know, you're losing ground from 13 post. So that's probably going to make up for that price difference. So I think they're probably close to equal. So I would use both those equally. So once again, you know, you, the, these early races, you can just always like keep rolling them out, like starting a pick five in race one. Uh, and then in race two, start a pick four. And depending on how you do, whether you want to press or start over, you know, so that's what's kind of cool about, about horse racing nowadays is every race, there's a double, a pick three, a pick four, something like that to keep 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 re re so to speak. All right, uh, race number five, and this is, by the way, 11 races. Race number five, I think it's very, it was not... Okay, so I think that the winner, West Will Power, two to one, I think that's pretty clear. But what you can do is that the six and the seven, I think, are pretty reasonable horses to maybe fill out the exacta. So the six at 10 to one and the seven at 30 to one, I think it's very, very reasonable to play something like four with the six, seven. I don't think the six or the seven can beat the four, but um, I think they can come in second and third. I think they can beat these other horses. So that's probably what I would recommend. It's something like the four with the six and the seven. And if you wanted to, again, like use the four in your pick fives, fours, threes, twos, whatever, you can do that. Race number six, there's really no value. I, I like like the one, the two, the six, the seven, the eight. Um, I guess the one is decent enough value just because they're all sort of equal and he's 12 to one, but I really wouldn't take any stand in this race. I would just basically spread these, meaning just play them all in like pick threes, pick fours and things like that. I wouldn't start anything new, I don't think, with this race. Maybe if the one goes off like 15 to one or something, Maybe it's worth it, but aside from that, probably not. Um, race number seven, I think the nine is going to be really, really short, but is well, is like clearly going to win. So um, I wouldn't try to beat it, but what you can do, similar to the fifth race, is I think that there are three horses you can use underneath that are pretty reasonable. So I think the three, Olivia Twist, the 12 to one, um, effortly elegant, the effortless, effortlessly elegant, the four, 12 to one, and Positano Sunset, the 10, uh, excuse me, the seven and 10 to one. I think those are good horses to use underneath. So I wouldn't use red carpet ready or a seed. Um, so maybe money's gold on top of those three, the three, four, and the seven. Uh, race number eight, I think is just a, a spread. Uh, I'll just give you the horses that I think are contenders. One, three, six, um, eight, nine, 11, 12. I, I will say that I don't think the 11 is that great at four to five, um, but I don't know exactly how to take a stand against it. I mean, the 12, I guess, is fair enough at 20 to one, but uh, I'm probably just going to either pass this race or just spread these uh, all these horses. Race number nine, uh, no value here. I think the one, the two, and the four are all solid and really just no value. Mm -hmm. Race 10, likewise, I think is just kind of an all, no real opinion there. And then, actually, the last race I'm going to go over is the Kentucky Oaks. I'm not going to go over the, the, the races after the Kentucky Oaks. So the Kentucky Oaks, I think that there's a couple of really strong long shots. The Probably the best of them is the 11, uh, defining purpose at 12 to 1. But there are others that are real bombs that can come in here. Um, the 12, Dorth Vader. The eight, uh, Promise Sheer America, the million to one. The 13, Affirmative Lady, 10 to one. And I do think Flying Connection at 15 to one is decent. And I also, unfortunately, do think Wet Paint is a strong, you know, is strong even though it's short. But I would probably take a shot with something like the 11 with all those other horses and then use him in second. And then I would even use him with Wet Paint. Um, but I think that there's um, 
quite a bit of value in all these courses. Um, 11, 12, 8, 13, and 10. 7, there's no value in. He's just kind of solid. But I think that defying purpose is a, is a pretty good, pretty good, uh, pretty good key horse in the uh, in, in the Kentucky Oaks. Um, if you need me to recap this, I will, but you shouldn't have to. You can just go back and should have been writing these down as that as it kind of came up. So um, we're just going to move on to the Kentucky Derby Day. Kentucky Derby Saturday, May sixth. Uh, race number one, I think, is extremely chalky. I think it's basically three in the one, one and three. It's not going to pay you anything, so I probably wouldn't bet it. Race number two, I think the eight is probably going to win, but again, no value. Three to one, I probably wouldn't bet that either. Race number three, um, likewise, I think the one is solid enough, but I think the 14 at six to one is almost as likely to win. So. If you do get this type of price discrepancy, maybe you could use the 14 on top of the one, but it is difficult to win from these outside posts. So maybe, maybe I'm just pressing here. Maybe there's no value here, but I do like the one on the 14. Um, race four, I think the three Wicked Halo is very, very solid here. I think she's better than the two. Good night, Olive. I like Wicked Halo. Sorry, the three. Better than Good Night Olive. So three, and then maybe one, two, and five underneath. But I think the three is, is the horse you should key. So again, we're not really off to a big value start here in this derby day. Uh, race number five, I think the seven at nine to two is the most likely winner. Uh, don't know exactly why is nine to two. I mean, I know why is nine to two. You know, people really want to bet on the five. Um, but I think the seven is, is really the most likely winner. So I think that you can key this one. Um, again, nothing really big as far as value goes quite yet. But race six is interesting. Like I, don't, I have to actually double check and make sure that this is what I think. But I, I have Zozos as, as solid, but then I have Gulfstream Way at 30 to 1 as definitely a possible. So um, as a matter of fact, let me, let me look at this live, and I actually will pull up the sheets to – uh, take a look and see if Gulfstream is way. It's race six, right? I'm just going to do this kind of live. I'm not going to get into all of this, but I'm missing something. Oh, that was that was May 5th. Sorry about that. Um, this one is May 6th. No, sorry about that. May 6th, 6th race. Yeah, Gulfstream Way. I like it. Um, so 30 to 1 on Gulfstream Way. Uh, let's go. Why not? We can all do good stuff. And it's certainly, you know, after five races of just basically boring favorites, I think that this is a this could really pop here. We'll see. Race seven, nothing. There's like a zillion horses that can win. I'll I'll read them off if you want. Two, three, four, six, seven, nine. 10, 11, 14, but there's no reason to take a stand here. Um, race number eight. Um, there are three horses here that I think are, are good, but at kind of differing prices. Fort, Fort Bragg, I think, is solid, solid enough, the seven, nine to two. And then the eight bourbon bash, I really like a 12 to one. And then if you're really in the mood, I mean, it's probably not going to win, but Let's just say that it's going to win more often than his odds indicate. Freezing point at 50 to 1. I've bet on worse horses than this before. I'll just leave it at that. It's probably going to win every once every 15 times, maybe. So it's not like it's a real high confidence pick, but definitely wins more than, you know, one out of 20 times. And it is 50 to 1. So you could try this. You want to just go for the throat, play a 7, 8, 14 box or something like that. That's totally reasonable. Race nine, you have just really, really good value here. So it really does pick up. I like the four and the five. Four, Talk of the Nation, and five, Johannes. Um, so I do like those two. Really good value there. And you get to race number 10. We're getting up to the Derby pretty soon. 
And I like um, two kind of middlers here. I like the, the, the six Tejano twist at six to one and the 10 endorsed at five to one. I like them to beat Cody's wish. Who's going to be a big favorite. Um, so I do like that. Um, race 11, which is the race before the Derby. I like up to the mark as a very solid four to one shot. Um, I think it's better than all these others. And I think that you can, you can key this one. So like you look at this, like the first like four or five races have been just kind of, you know, kind of favorites, not too much confidence, whatever. When you get into these late, late races, I mean, you could, you could really do some damage here and that could be good or bad, I guess. And then you get to the Derby and I'll just kind of get right to it. I mean, I really like something here. Um, I, I like the, um, like the nine Skinner. I really almost think it's the most likely winner. I mean, it's close. I mean, I, I, if, if you had to say who the most likely winners are, again, like odds being totally equal, I think it is between three horses. I think it's between Tappet, Trice, Forte, and 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 Skinner. Um, but as you can see, I mean, Tappet, Trice, and Forte are really short, and Skinner is really long. So I think this is absolute clear – Horse to key, key, clear horse to bet to win, clear horse to use on top. Um, now, if that's not good enough for you, if you want more, I mean, yes, I think the five and the 15 are fine. And then there's some other horses in here. I, I like them. I mean, even Disarm is not the worst. Angel of Empire, the 14, is, is, is pretty good. Cyclone Mischief, if he gets in. 30 to one. I mean, there, there are horses in here. Two fills is all right. Mage is all right. Um, but you know, it's a million horses in this race. I, I wouldn't try to get too fancy here. Like the last thing you need is the, is the like Skinner bet him on top and just miss to some random horse for the exact. So I, I, I would bet him to win. I would, I would also use him in the end of some doubles and triples and pick fives and stuff like that. So um, that's what I like. I think it's a very, very strong bet. And um, that will do it. So listen, good luck, everybody, uh, in Derby weekend. Uh, if you want more daily fantasy sports content, you can, you know, we do all the sports at, at truedfs.com. And uh, that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.